So you've got a brand new Portenta and you've got the Arduino IDE up. Let's install it. Uh, one thing to remember, um, there's a site if you Google GitHub, uh, my examples Portenta, probably the first click will be this one, HBSS JLS, and the URL is up there. And it has all my examples that I've been working through these quite a bit. Uh, but today, let's just install. So there's some blank code. Your first step is going to be going to the board manager. There's the board manager. And you need to type port or embed or something. I type port because it brings up the two examples and nothing else. Now, if you had... Um, a board before and you had installed any of these 1.22, 1.21 or 1.20, you should probably install 1.3.1 because it deletes it. It's pretty much the same as removing it. I've already removed mine. This is the one we want to install. Notice it doesn't say deprecated. It just says Arduino embed enabled boards. And so that's the Nano 33 BLE and the Portenta at the moment. So I'm going to click install. It's uh, quite a slow install, unless, of course, it's already installed. Um, so let's talk about the board while we're waiting for that. The board's pretty impressive. Uh, it's got your, your openings there for the pins. Um, the big deal is those two connectors at the back. There's one, there's the other. That allows you to have 160 pins, but to access those, you're going to need something perhaps like this um, vision shield, the Portenta vision shield. And there you go. You can see it's got the two pins on the back. It's also got an SD card. It's got an Ethernet and it's got the camera. So the way this would go is that would just screw on on the back and that doesn't look like it's lined up properly. You see how it's lined up properly right there. And that pops in. Oh, by the way, this also has the JTAG. Um, debugging connectors there. So as you can see, it's still installing. It's quite a, a slow process to install. So let's talk about a couple of other things. Another problem or issue is that when you first get this, you can't do much um, because it's not got pins enabled for a breadboard and it's not got female headers. So my solution to that was to put really, really long female headers on. And what that allows me to do, it's a bit of a problem if I want to use the high density, I would have to snip off each one of these and then I couldn't use a breadboard. But at the moment, I'm quite lucky I've got two of them so I can have one for anything that's coming with connectors. And I'm assuming more things are on their way. There was something about a carrier board, but I don't know if that's faded a little bit in, um, uh, kind of a liking these carrier boards that have a few things on them instead of the one big board. Anyway, this is quite nice because it can fit into a breadboard. And I'll line it up properly. So now you have female headers and a couple of pins on each side of the breadboard. So I like this arrangement. Uh, as I said, you would have to snip off those pins to be able to use the high density connector, but I don't really think that's a big deal. Another issue is this uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth cable. Uh, I don't really like connecting and disconnecting stuff, although it probably is pretty easy to. Once I put it on, I tend to leave it on and I'm just going to wrap that around. On this one, I haven't attached the, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth because it's just kind of irritating having a little wire attached to it. So I'm going to wait till I have a, a need with that one. And this one, I'll tape it out of the way so you're not catching it on something. It has a bit of a stickiness on the actual antenna part, um, but I just, I just tape it off to the side. So I'm going to pause for a second while we finish off this uh, installing. Okay, so one little thing right at, that, at the end of that install, it needed administrator um, privileges, which is going to be a problem if you're at a school. Um, 
uh, a lot of Arduino boards don't need that. So there was this little uh, allowing you to install probably some kind of um, communication with the board and the software. Anyway, that is now in installed. I've got 1.3.0. You may have a higher version of that. And looks like all's good. So let's try some stuff out. Um, first, very, very first thing you should do, and hopefully it works, is go down to the, uh, oh, I got to click on the board. Sorry there. Uh, choose the board. So this is the Arduino Portenta H7 M7 core. That's the, ah, I just chose the wrong one. And it would be super handy to have hotkeys to do this, but, oh, I did choose the right one. Okay, good. So I'm plugged in, but you've got to hit that twice within about a second to get what's called breathing green. Yours might be breathing a little slower. The new bootloader tends to get it breathing faster. And here it's on the COM19. Now make sure it is actually doing that pulsing green thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the examples. There are the examples for the Portenta M7 system. And I'm gonna update the bootloader. So we run this and it will be reasonably quick. Um, and what this is going to do is this is just going to protect your bootloader a little bit better than the original bootloader that came on the, uh, the board. Probably a really good idea to do it reasonably quickly. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go do a blink. And blink is kind of the first program. Um, you're welcome to just go to examples and go find the typical blink program. Uh, it would be in basics and blink and sure I'll yeah I'll do that one today um, I definitely have a better on my site a better one called blink serial which not only tests blinking but it tests serial but I guess traditionally the blink is the beginner uh, Arduino type program so it's updating the bootloader but we're going to have to go into serial after we up, update this bootloader. And be aware, it's on COM19 right now because it's breathing green. Uh, that's going to switch. And whether it automatically switches or you actually have to go to the port and switch it are two things that kind of are random. It sort of depends how advanced the program was that was on the computer before, on the um, Portenta before. So I'm going to pause again because we just don't need to see this. Oh, it looks like it's finishing. So it's looking for the port. It should find COM19 pretty easily. There it goes. It's installing to 804. That is the main core and that's good to know. So did it switch? Yes. It looks like it switched to COM18. I used to check all the time. And so now we go to the serial monitor and the serial monitor is saying latest version of the board is already installed. That's because I've been using it, but I'm going to show you what you would do. Uh, it might say something like version 15 or version 18. So I'm going to hit yes and send and the bootloader is update. You may now disconnect the board. So I'm going to disconnect the board and now I can get out of here and I'm going to grab that basic blink just to see if everything's working. So plug the board in. I always, 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 always um, double click it to get it breathing. So it's in DFU mode when I first plug it in. Once it's in, if you're working on a reasonably simple program, um, tends not to be that big a deal. But notice here, your serial port switch from COM18 to COM19. So I'm going to put it back into COM19. That's the um, DFU one. As I said, when you get used to your board, you may find you never have to use um, that. If you were just doing the sort of basic blink programs, uh, it would know as COM18 and everything would be fine. But I tend to be loading really large programs. So I've just gotten the habit of every time I plug the board in, 
I go into what's called DFU mode, the breathing green. So that's reasonably quick too. And unfortunately, that one is going to have the green onboard LED blinking green, which isn't much different than the DFU mode. So I'm just going to change this. Notice this program. Um, LED blue is a little more exciting. Typically you have a variable and you switch the variable, but I'm actually totally fine with this way of doing it. Now, here's another thing. Is it saying hi is turning it on? Well, that's very traditional Arduino, but actually on this board, because the LED, the onboard LED is attached to 3v3, to complete the circuit, we need to actually ground it first and let it wait. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change that to three seconds just so it kind of proves. Now, I haven't done anything major. We're still on, ooh, I never did actually connect to a port. So let's connect to port 18 and see if I actually had to get it back in breathing mode. You see how similar that green light is to, to breathing? It's not breathing, it's not fuzzing in and out, but it's flashing, so that's not a really great proof of, of working. Now there's one last thing, if this actually does work, uh, that I'd like to talk to you about, but here we go. It is now on for three seconds, off for a second, one second, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, off, okay? And the low and high, you should switch around with that. That whole, took me a while to get used to this whole low and high. If you hook up um, an LED to an actual pin, it will work uh, like standard based on how you've hooked up the LED. Uh, one last thing is in the examples, if you are going to do any Wi-Fi, let's get down to the Portenta. In the Wi-Fi, there is a Wi-Fi updater. Doesn't seem to be any examples in here, but this program should definitely be done. Uh, I would switch it to DFU, but let's see if it can handle uh, as I said, we're not running anything really advanced here. Uh, let's see if it works. I can't remember how long this one is to compile. Um, when you start using some of the complex programs, it is actually quite a while to compile. Uh, you let it compile, head off and go do something for a couple minutes. Let's see how this goes. So this is updating the Wi-Fi um, in the background programming. Uh, I actually haven't gone through it to have a look at it, but it looks like we're almost done. Once again, once that loads, we need to load the serial port. Always a good idea to check if you are on COM18 for mine, it'll be different on yours, but serial port, no file system found, formatting. I'm hoping that's all good. Now, I wasn't in DF, oh, that looks good. Firmware and certificates updated. I think one time I did it, it actually asked me if I wanted to, but perhaps I had already. So that all looks good. I can get out of there and we're done. We have a, a installed core onto the Arduino system. We have a Portenta that the bootloader has been updated. That's the thing that when you hit that twice, it's flashing. Originally, it was probably uh, breathing a little bit slower. So that's how you can tell you've got the new bootloader. It's a little quicker. And we've updated the Wi-Fi. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got lots more videos.